so many nice colors. I mean, it's something like you may not have anyone have that color. So this is like giving your daughter a Ferrari. Is this like a, a loss prevention uh, strategy? Are you excited? I'm terrified. I think we want to spoil you with your first saltwater aquarium. So I'm going to go. Oh. Are you ready? No, I'm cold. Get this done today? I feel, I feel tingles. Oh, you'll be okay. You'll be okay. Okay. All okay. right. Hi, how Nima. are you guys? Hey. How are you? Nice it's to been, see you guys. It's been about a year, right? Nice yeah, to see yeah, you. yeah. Okay. How are you guys? Well, we've got a special thing that we're doing for the Fritz fam today. Sure. We're actually getting Jimmy, who is, yeah, the Fritz yeah. fam's favorite because he's behind the camera. His own saltwater aquarium today. He's always been That's exciting. A, a salt, a freshwater guy, yep. okay. right? But I've been but itching since our travels. Today so. I'm bringing him to the dark side of saltwater. We're going to walk you through the day. First, we're gonna pick out your aquarium. Okay. Nima, do you want to show him around? Sure. We have the 15s, 15 gallon. Yeah, he told me this was 2.99 with the stand and everything. I was yeah. like, that's pretty dang good. We have 25 here. That's a lagoon, so it's shallow. Uh -huh. I and love shadow, shallows, and plus you can see from the top. Yeah, that's I do like cool. that one. That might be, that might work. Okay. But the bigger, the better. I know that. We have right? this, okay. so. We have this guy, that's a 40 long. Filter sucks here. You have the return pump. Okay. You just need like a so heater you, light. You yeah. don't need a sump on the bottom then. No. This is all in one. Yeah, all in one. That's just so I can keep my shoes in here and everything. <laughs> I think we want to spoil you with your first saltwater aquarium. So I'm gonna go bigger is better yes. on this one. My very first saltwater aquarium was a 55 gallon and I like that it's open top. Yeah. Um, and even that it has this net, net top to keep your fish from jumping out. Okay, is and that a big so, problem in the saltwater world? Well, it's a big problem in any open top aquarium right. okay. world. I mean, yeah. even freshwater fish might decide to jump out if they get spooked or something like that. Well, Jimmy's done a great job for the Fritz fam. Wouldn't you say that he deserves the larger 40 gallon aquarium here. So all you guys need is uh, usually two lights because this is like three feet. So get like two Kessel 360. Okay. That will be plenty. Okay. And then you will need a heater, some sand, some rock, water, and that's all. All right. You say that's all, but I know it's a little bit more <laughs> it's, complicated. It's really a little bit more. not that hard to set up a saltwater aquarium. A lot of people are very intimidated by this, but it's really more of a recipe. And you kind of want to start with the aquarium store that you trust because they're gonna kind of hold your hand through setting up your own aquarium. But today is really kind of simple. We just need sand, we need some rock, right. we need uh, the lights. Bacteria. Bacteria and wow. get Lucky the thing started. Lucky I know a guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is this like a, a loss prevention uh, strategy that you have? Keep all the expenses up on top shelf. Like, yeah. This is, our A360X, you'll need two of those. Yep. This is like monster lighting for your little aquarium uh, because, and I say 40 gallons, kind of referencing little, that's just because we've seen so many massive builds, but this is way more than enough lighting for you. Usually these are good for two feet. Right. So yeah, even if you upgrade to bigger tank, that should be plenty for four or five feet, no problem. Okay. Yep. Wow, these are quite pricey. <laughs> hey. Nothing but the You're best, the best yeah. for Jimmy Sweet. here today. Sand. Sand, yeah. Okay. Kepsi, Fiji pink. We have Fiji pink and then we have reef sand. Oh, come on, sand. So, so what is the difference? Uh, it's just a little bit finer. So that one is finer than this. Oh, okay. Usually we use reef, but some people like the look on the Fiji. So it's mostly personal, I would say. I always go Fiji pink, okay, Jimmy. Yeah. I've been doing okay. it for 20 something years going with the Fiji pink. The grains are smaller, and I feel like sometimes as the tank ages, the larger pieces of aragonite that's in this sand tend to get algae on it as well. And that's not something that you're gonna be able to clean off, and so it just kind of creates a green coloration speckle throughout your sand. I really like the fine stuff because I don't see that happening with that. PG Pink. PG Pink. I don't PG even Pink. like the name. Yeah, I'm not letting you go out there with aragonite. No I like problem. actually like you're forcing your hand those. on this one. Two of these. Yes. Yep. Okay. That's it. Oh. Yeah, fish glass, ammonia. Yeah, okay, so you're gonna need this with the turbo start, Jimmy. So, hey, Fritz fam, not exactly wanting to pitch my own product here, but I mean, when the opportunity's there, obviously, Jimmy, you're gonna need some turbo start. So wait, I know, I work for Fritz and everything, but I don't know all our products entirely. What's the difference? Okay, so what this is, is gonna be the saltwater nitrifying bacteria. And 
that's going to seed your aquarium with all the necessary bacteria to really instantly cycle your aquarium because it's going to it, it's going to provide that ammonia and nitrite consumption right away that you would have to build up over time right if you didn't have the live bacteria in a bottle so okay um, so this is like the other step but this is like on steroids exactly uh so there is for time seven yeah. or nine for time nine would be the the non-refrigerated version of that and right. that has to be a little bit more diluted because of the temperature range at which it's kept in yeah the more concentrated it becomes um the shorter the shelf life on it so that's why and that's the more important the temperature control to slow down that biologic process within the bottle um, and to keep that from you know expiring because it works through its life science and so science science <laughs> with turbo start especially in this size of aquarium are safe to go ahead and add fish and feel confident yeah. that you're never going you to get ammonia times. right but a lot of people really like to just ensure that they're not going to have any sort of situation happen they prefer to use liquid ammonia to just kind of test out the bacteria ensure it's working oh okay maybe that's pure liquid ammonia this is pure liquid ammonia wow. okay. so you'll add this you'll actually witness an ammonia spike when adding it and you'll see it drop down within probably 12 hours in this case this is your food source for your bugs okay so these actually live off ammonia and nitrite and okay. then they convert it all over to, to nitrate get you explain to me like i was five years old <laughs> he gets it, he gets it. <laughs> i think jimmy's setting us up to educate you as a consumer um such a marketing expert jimmy <laughs> Uh, these does, this does have a flow pump in there with two returns. Yes, but you need uh, flow, more flow, so maybe one or two of these okay. CG pumps. We love CJ. Um, Shout out to using, Steve and Jay. We're using <laughs> these in all of our setups lately, and we've had no complaints of this. So we'll put two of these, and that's really just going to kind of give you some flow adjustment within your aquarium. Just a 100 watt heater. Okay. That's all you need. Eheim. Yeah. Know that yeah. name. And this may fit in the back compartment there, so... Oh, yeah, so you can hide it. Yeah, yep. so you can hide it. Okay. Where do you put these? Do you put these near the top, the middle, or the bottom? So, you, generally, the you flow. would put those right up at the top. Top or middle, yeah. not bottom. Top, okay. Not bottom, not because bottom. then you're just going to stir Sand. up the sandbag, right? Okay. If you want something to make your life easy... We're going to make a mix his it. own salt. I'm okay. not going to make it easy on you and you just get to come to uh, Sea King and have Nima make your salt for you. Right. This is, you're doing the full on job where you're going to mix your own salt. So you're going to need that Ultra Zero yeah. pump. So definitely yeah. going to get one of those. Oh. And See, this is why it's kind of intimidating. There's like so much there's stuff a lot. going on. Now, I will say that we are giving Jimmy all the bells and whistles because we are kind of connected and we want to spoil him because he's done such a nice job for you as the Fritz fan. However, if you are on a budget, you don't have to go all out with some of these things. Really, you could have gotten by with just the aquarium alone and the return pump that splits two ways. Right. You would have been fine. So this is like giving your daughter a Ferrari at 16. <laughs> kind of. Another prize we have for you today is this car waiting right outside the, the oh, shop. That's going to be yours that's as mine? soon as today. <laughs> <laughs> what else? Uh, well, I know there's more. There's probably more. I mean, I could just shop here all day and get you a little cool things to do. Okay. So this is just your standard portable refractometer. Honestly, I really like these. They're a little bit less expensive. So I think we should go with this. Don't use RODI water. Um, use a refractometer solution. So you add it to the scope and this is going to set your salinity at 35 ppt. It'll turn the dial on the refractometer to make sure that this says 35 PT when it has this calibration solution in it because this is exactly what this, the guaranteed salinity of this is. Okay. I think Accurate. this could be a future video just showing how to use these tools. Maybe a short tools and for the Fritz fan? We'll just yeah. make it a short? Yeah. This is going to be where you would actually apply your refractometer solution. Just goes on the glass? Yep, right there. Okay. You'll close that up, okay? It is 1.025 at 35 parts per thousand. So this company has done a nice job making sure this was already calibrated. calibrated. If it wasn't calibrated, you would have popped this little thing off here and you would have adjusted this left or right to make sure that that blue line in there is right Can at I see what you're thousand. seeing in yeah. there? Take a look. Now you may have to adjust it based on your vision. Okay, I can see it. 
So the more salt you add, the more the right side goes up. Well, I mean, the whole blue line goes up, right? Exactly. We we'll put this on there. It won't scratch it up. It's like what you use on your car, Jimmy. Yeah. So you're gonna clean this brand. The ShamWow. That you uh, have gotten today uh, with this. It should okay. only take about five uh, hours. Like <laughs> <laughs> okay, that wasn't scary at all. What's right. this? So this would be like. Oh, for it, get the water, water to put on there. there. Okay. Yeah. So. so one thing we forgot for your setup is the salt. So free salt is what I would recommend. That's going to be 200 gallons, so it's good for a while for you for all your water change. And then that's what we use in the house. So if you need it, emergency salt water, we have it in the house. That's for all our own system. Mima, can you show us some things that will be easy to take care of, but a little bit more high end and nice? Sure, no problem. More high end, huh? <laughs> so I would say Zoanta. Zoantas are super easy. They grow pretty good, and then there's a lot of good variety. So here, there's a couple really nice doors right here. Those are really nice. If you want one of my favorites, I'll yeah. show you that guy. Okay. That's a Rasta Zoal. Yeah, Rastas. Yeah, Rasta Zoal, that's a really nice one. And so the way that zoanthids grow, Jimmy, is they actually grow on a mat. They split off of each other. You may have a piece that is this big now, but this can take over an entire rock within a year's time. One year? Yeah. Okay. If they really get comfortable nice, the more you move them around, the more temperamental they're going to be and they're not going to get comfortable and grow the way you want them. Sometimes in the beginning, if they don't look like they're growing well, you'll have to move them around. And so oh, it's always okay. best not to glue them down until you see that they're taking, that they're, that they're doing well within a, a spot. Sounds like a lot of trial and error. Yeah. Also, in my experience, something easy like a Sunny D. That one is a really oh, nice Oh, Sunny D! Sunny, sunny D! <laughs> Recordias, I can show you Recordias. a bunch of Recordias. Mushrooms are really easy. And there is a variety of colors. I mean, from blue, rainbows, wow. oranges, pink. I mean, I don't know what to call these. All like multicolored rainbows, orange. So super easy, low light, low flow. So many nice colors. I mean, it's something like you may not have anyone have that color. Maybe something like plain color. Like that, plain orange, mo most people have it. But like that one, I personally don't see a lot. Blue, that's a pretty oh, rare yeah, one. Oh yeah, look at that blue. Yeah, we have plenty of greens over there. That's okay. why we separate them. Those are more common. But Recordias, they get bubbly, they change color, they get more color. What about uh, something like a, a clove polyp or something like that? Clove polyp, have anything that's... we have plenty of them there. My favorite is gonna be the yellow ones. You're going to see a lot of the firework or the pink one, those are more common. Okay. But these yellow ones are a little bit slower grower, not as fast grower than fireworks, the other one. And those are more red. So I personally love the yellow ones, yellow tips. Only thing I would say though, try to keep them separate. They are tend to be a little bit, even the yellow ones, faster grower than most corals. So you usually we recommend people keeping them separate in a separate island or separate rock. Okay. That's recommended, yeah. That's what I need to learn too, like what coral or whatever doesn't go with what. Well, that seems like a whole nother world. That's things that you'll learn as you go. Yeah. If you try to take that on right away. Um, and this is where it's important for you to have a relationship with your local fish store so that you can have that trusted source that knows your aquarium, that knows what corals you've picked. Because in some instances, if you're bouncing around, the different employees at the different shops may not know what you already have in there. If you do bounce around because it's exciting to do so, which I understand, just make sure you clearly explain what's already in your aquarium. It may be a good idea to keep a, a, a short video of everything you've got inside of it. So, Oh, can I have your cell phone number too? <laughs> <laughs> the what? Have a cell phone number and <laughs> address. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to today give you Nima's personal cell phone number, his personal address. I'll have it in the description. <laughs> <laughs> so you can call Nima at any time with questions about your coral. He really likes midnight calls. Didn't you ask me about this coral right here earlier? Yep. Okay, so this is an alveopora. It looks like Which a field one? of flowers, right? This, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks like a flower bed. then. I would say that, Nima, would you say that that's a little bit next level, like kind of intermediary True. Uh, yeah. with taking care yeah. of it? Yeah. And actually, Nima, if you want to grab one of those and just kind of hold it up, oh, no way. it's going to look completely different because it has a skeleton underneath oh. it too. Oh, whoa. Whoa. And you see how it tucked all in there? Now, that being all on one rock, does that now make it a goniopora or is that still alveopora? This is alveopora, yeah. That's goni right there next to right. it. Pretty expensive, right, Nima? A little bit, yeah. Right. 
the more color they get, the more expensive they get. So how much is something like that? Those guys are two ninety nine a colony. Okay. So right. yeah, same as that, two ninety nine. So three hundred bucks. Because I love that flower bed garden type of wood. Well, you're gonna have to get some then, and those will grow well as well, right? That skeleton will just continue to grow. Exactly. And yeah. The yeah. Colony will get it bigger. crosses. Yeah. It would just they usually grow their own skeleton. Yeah. So I'm really interested because for the freshwater world, right. carpets, that looks awesome. Now, because I talked to Evie about having a carpet of that and if, if it's harder. So, so Nima, do you want to break it to him or you want me oh, to break no. it to him? Oh no. GSP, yeah. GSP, green star poly, if it's soft coral, they grow super fast. So if you want to carpet your sand bottom, mm -hmm. a lot of the time you can see we grew them mm -hmm. to the wall. They just grow, so again, you want to be careful. They grow super fast, so make sure put them somewhere you want them to cover. They just oh, okay. cross, and you can see like you just keep like you see they grow oh, together. Yeah, 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 yeah. You keep cutting them, but yeah, right here that's a fry. This display has a couple nice ones. You can see the clowns are already hosting them. Look at them. Wow, yeah, they're loving it. Leather is something else. It looks looks so cool. That is one of my favorite pieces to put inside the very middle of your aquarium yeah. because I feel like it's like the showpiece. Mm -hmm. The only downside to the toadstool is it does grow so well, so overarchingly fast, that it tends to shade everything out from underneath it. And so you really do have to okay, dedicate right. a certain amount of real estate for the toadstool. You can cut on a toadstool, um, but it's kind of heartbreaking. It's like yeah. your own plant and eventually you may have to upgrade or take it back to Nima here and he would Trading. maybe exchange you for the smaller one. Yeah. And so that way you can continue to, to grow something to the larger size. That's a must have, the leather pieces. Okay, so we've talked enough about coral, Jimmy. We need to find a couple of beginner level fish that, you know, obviously an easy choice is the clownfish, but sometimes people are like, everyone does the clownfish. I've seen uh, Mr. Jake, Jack. Yeah. Merman. Jack Merman. Yep. Yeah, I get bit by clowns and it kind of scared me. So, <laughs> well, I, I know the bite's not like significant, but like anything just nipping at your fingers is weird. Actually, a clown's bite can be pretty really? bad. Really? Okay. Like, uh, <laughs> it really can make it hard to clean an aquarium, and they do get very territorial. Yeah, yeah. A clownfish is, in fact, a damselfish, and so it is in that same uh, oh, you know, species. Okay. And damsels can be mean. But a lot of times people use them as starter fish. Um, and I, I hesitate to say starter fish, and they use it to kind of test the waters of the aquarium because of their price. But eventually a damsel becomes territorial and mean, right. and now you've got to do something with your damsel. In an aquarium that you've already established with rock, he's picking on other things because he's had time to settle. So a clownfish can do the exact same thing and the exact same behavior. I would say that they're not quite as mean as like a yellowtail damsel or a three striped damsel, um, but they can get territorial to their area of wherever they've created their symbiotic relationship with their coral to lay their eggs. Okay. <laughs> uh, coming from the freshwater world, I mean, I, I'm a big community guy, so I love schooling fish. Is there schooling fish? Absolutely. Nima, you want to take that one? Sure. Schooling? You can even school clowns. You see there's a school of clowns. Yeah. But most commons are like the chromises. The chromises. People love, okay. yeah, schooling They're chromises. beautiful, yeah. yeah. Is Comes that as big as they get? These guys, I have them for more than five years. Oh, so wow. These okay, are pretty yeah. old. Awesome. Yeah, these are five years old. And the Bay Guy Cardinals, these will school as well, yeah. and they'll hover in a, in a given area. And a lot of times with Bay Guys, these can be uh, tank raised as well. One other thing I want to show you, because I noticed you had both varieties that really might shock you, Fritz fan. Uh, on the saltwater side, they make something called an engineering goby, right? I love and, it already. And so, it actually, I saw it pop out of this rock here, and it looks more like an eel, but you would be shocked. I don't want to show you what it turns into yet. I want to show you what it starts as. Come over here. Okay. This is an engineering goby. Again, great that you have a top on the Okay, that doesn't look like a goby. Yeah, it doesn't, and it looks like quite plain, but you will be shocked to see what these turn into as they get older. They are very good. You mentioned kind of keeping the sand stirred up. Okay. These guys, pro and con, they keep the sand stirred up, but if you, unless you stack the rock on the glass, it becomes a problem because then the rock shifts. And if you have things glued in place, it could cause things to crack or it could cause huh. things to collapse. Actually, there should be a couple of them. I think we have three or four of them here. Pay attention to here, but it's going to come running out. This is show. Oh! Wow! Actually, that guy is really long. I mean, that's half of his body. There's oh, two, two of them in there! 
Again, this is half of their body. They are that at least 10 inches. What? Yep. Yeah, they can get quite big. Like what they can we? actually get about an inch thick and probably about 18 inches long. Yeah, really? That's true. And you why is that, the name yeah. engineering goat? Because they're constantly working the sand. Okay. Right? Creating like pathways underneath the rocks. Is this your exact system? Is this his tank? Nima? What? Is this his size tank? Uh, no, mine is the size. That's 60. Next one. Okay. Yep, that's 60. the size. Yeah. Oh, you're already looking at bigger tanks, Jimmy. What are you doing? I'm just looking yeah, at the shrimp. <laughs> yeah, so those Whoa! things are awesome. Oh, look at him go. And what's really cool about um, the fire shrimp or a cleaner shrimp is they actually um, can keep, help keep your, your fish free of parasites. And so if, I like you, that. if you find one that's been in the ocean enough, generally they still have that natural instinct response to uh, look for parasites on the fish and help keep them clean of it. So. Cleaner is always, as you said, better. The cleaner is the one okay. with the white stripe, yeah. But fire does it as well. Okay, so you're all educated up. You have some work to do to set up your aquarium, Jimmy. Are you excited? I'm terrified. You've been <laughs> talking about this since you started at But I know, I just got to get my hands in there. Okay. okay. All right, Fritz fam, I just wanted to give another special thanks to Nima, who let us come into his store today and walked us through all of your fishing coral and even no helped us get an aquarium for Jimmy. Sure. Uh, thank you for being with Jimmy Anytime. as he kind of starts to set up this aquarium. I know he'll do well. Um, if you have not been to Seattle Coral or Sea King Aquarium, that is Nima. He's a very friendly person in the aquarium trade. Uh, he's been in it for the entire time that I've been at Fritz. Thank you, Nima. Sure, anytime. We really appreciate you letting anytime. us come in. Until next time, snailed it. <laughs>